Hey folks, Dan with Holy Spirit Soapbox. Once again, I hope you are doing well and I'm praying for you. If you have any prayer requests, just reach out. We have a prayer request page on HolySpiritSoapbox.com. You can also chat with us there. You can also send us notes like encouragement notes or man, I hate your gut notes, whatever you want to do. I, you, you can totally do it there. No, we have the ability to chat with each other so you can feel free to go, reach out there and I will get back to you or Stacy will get back to you. Also, again, prayer requests. If you have anything that you would love to pray about, have a community pray about, please feel free to reach out there. I'm going to stay on the whole hiking thing today. Okay, whether or not you like hiking too bad, you're going to listen to me talk a little bit more about hiking. No, it's all going to come back to God, of course. But last week we talked about my hike that I had that was very treacherous. And I and I wanted to go down this other trail because I kind of want to take the easy route. But then again, the easy route might look easy from the outside, but might not be actually easy when you're actually on the trail itself. So This week, we're going to go a different route, okay? Now, I always grew up a scaredy cat. Just ask my parents. I was always scared. Ever since I was like, whenever I discovered fear, I guess, I was always scared. And it's funny because now, with children, if they get scared, I have to like reassure them there's nothing to worry about. And that's hard. That's kind of hard because I'm like, I get it comes from a purely sympathetic heart or empathetic heart, right? Like, I was there. I know. I get it. You're scared. Yeah, I know what being scared is all about. Do you guys have fears? No, seriously. Like, everybody that's listening in, do you have fears? I still have fears. I really do. Of course I do. I'm not going to go over what they are today. But it's it's tough to combat these fears without God. Sometimes I wonder how people can go through life without God in general Especially when you're fearful, but we try not to give these fears like power. But knowing that we have a God who's awesome and cares about us brings us some relief. Now, that hike I was referring to last week, same hike, okay? I was by myself. And I remember saying to myself, gosh, I I wish Stacy was here right now. Or, Or I wish... My friend, I insert friend's name here, was, was with me right now. And I laugh at it now because I fell back upon relieving my fear by wishing a human being was with me. Uh, this is a true story. I, I'm not even kidding. I spoke this out loud and I was walking and I was scared. I was scared. I was looking around. I was like, okay, I don't know if there's an animal out here. It's like seven, eight in the morning. I don't know if something, it's really nice out, by the way, but this is great, God. Wow, it's beautiful out here, but how come there's nobody around? It's just me. I mean, I kind of hope it's just me. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) And again, I was laughing at it because I was like relieving my fear of being out there alone by thinking of, of a human or wishing that a human was with me. It was good to think about, I guess. And and, and listen, it, it's great to have community. It's great to have a person or people with you, especially when you're going through something, right? Something that's rough or something that's fearful. It's great to have people to talk to about this, but I did not have that. And it really showed me where my heart was. In who I depended on, honestly. And it sure wasn't God in that in that situation, in that time. Now, I will say, though, that people continuously say, trust in the Lord or give all your fears to God. And quite frankly, I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> I didn't know how to do that, really. Apparently, even recently, I still don't know how to initially trust in God when I'm worried or I'm fearful. Now, it was a great indicator for me, though. It was a great indicator. And maybe it is a good indicator for you too if you're going through something right now or if you're going through some kind of fearful situation. If you're in a situation that that brings out fear, where do your instincts lie? Where do your instincts lie? You could take this as question one. We usually ask questions at the end, but shoot, here's your first question, right? Do you rely on your on your own capabilities? Right? If you're in if you're scared, do you rely on like, okay, 
okay, let me think. And I'm not, I kid you not. I actually sent a meme to Stacy the other day and it was like a guy facing a bear that's like in his convenience store or something. And it's like 90% of the time men think about this scenario of like fighting a bear that comes into your convenience store. It's so, it's so specific, but we do think about that. I'm, I'm serious. As a man, I do think about that a lot. I'm like, okay, now let's think that something happens like a bear walks up to me from like the left side. What am I going to do with my right hand? Well, I can reach for my bear mace with this. Like I think about all these things. I rely on my own capabilities. Okay, what happens if it's a hostage situation, right? This is what I'm going to do. Like, you think about these things. It's ridiculous. But when you're in a situation, of course, there are certain things you have to do. You can't just kind of sit here and whatever. But your instincts fall back on yourself. They may fall back on yourself. They fell back on, on me during that time, too. I kept thinking, if something happens, what do I do right now? What, do, what am I going to do? What can I do? And there was the other aspect that I relied on somebody else, even though they weren't there. Stacy wasn't there. My friend wasn't there, the one that was supposed to come hiking, but he ended up not being able to. They weren't there, but I said, oh, man, I wish they were here right now because I'm so scared. Like, I was relying, like, if Stacy was there, I'm sorry, no offense to Stacy, she probably wouldn't be able to take on a bear either, okay? Like, if a bear was really hungry or mad and they wanted to come after both of us, I mean, one of us is going to have to fight, or both of us are going to have to fight, or both of us are going to have to run. I don't know what's going to happen. But again, I fell back on my own capabilities, and I fell back on a person's capabilities that was not there. Now, again, I do understand that we have different talents, okay, that might get us out, get us out of like situations. Like if you were in like the CIA or the FBI, you have some skills, man, right? Okay, you might be ha having skills with like a firearm or knives or like physically with your body whatever that's cool and it might give us a way to to help others in a situation too and these talents should be used a hundred percent but relying fully and depending on them a hundred percent is not the answer because what if being fully reliant on your own talent or mind or self in general somehow fails just because you have all these techniques all these things that you're you're talented in or martial arts or shooting or n using knives or whatever. What if it fails? What if you don't have that control or opportunity to use your talents or your mind? Now you're like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> now what do I do? When I hiked and when I noticed no one was around and I realized there could be a nice seven-foot bear or mountain lion, in the, mountain lion in the area, like stalking me. I fell back on faith in myself, and then I fell into the faith in others, even though they weren't there. And that struck me literally in the moment. The Spirit like struck me and was like, what are you saying? There's no one else around you right now. It's just you and me. You're trying to rely on your own faith. You're trying to rely on somebody else who's not there. But listen, hello. <laughs> hello, Dan. Holy Spirit is here with you. Now, this was a problem that I fell back on my own faith or I fell back in the faith of a human. It exacerbated the issue, honestly. Now, I did put myself in this situation. Did I have to go up hiking by myself? No, I did not. But it was already happening and I wanted to go and spend time with God. That was my goal. My goal on that day was to go hike up. I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to go by myself. In a sense, I did. In a sense, I didn't. But I ended up going by myself because the other person could not go. Nobody else could go with me anyway. So I was like, well, I'm going. So I went up to spend time with God. And that was my goal. That was my end goal. Now, could I have done that in my own home? Of course. So that's the thing. I, I kind of took the the path. I took the, the trek myself. I made the decision. I used my free will to make that decision. So either way, it was happening. I was already there. Things were happening. That was it. Okay? And in that current situation, I had to trust God. So when I was going to meet with him and retreat from everything, this also came with a metaphor, I guess. It also came with sanctification. I was going to better my relationship with God. In the process of hiking to the spot 
to retreat and spend time with God also came with the situation of relying on God while getting to the top of the mountain and back down. I was focused on the end goal of rely of my focus on my relationship with God at the end of the to- at the top of the mountain. I was like, "Oh man, once I get to the top of the mountain, that's when I'll spend time with God." And that's ridiculous. That was that's that was ridiculous thinking. I the whole journey had God in it. Just like your journey has God in it. Every day, every moment has God in it. And you could choose to trust in God in every single moment of your life. At the time, I didn't trust in him. At the time, I was trusting myself and somebody else. As I was focused, again, on trying to get to the top so I can spend time with God. I was like, God, once I get there, (laughs) we're going to have a party up there. The whole time, he was walking with me. And no one else could make my relationship stronger in this position but my own focus on God. And right after the Spirit spoke to me in that, in, that, in that moment, that instance, and I realized I relied on humans and self, I was convicted. That's how the Spirit talks to me, actually. He doesn't, not audibly, okay? So I know some of you might hear him audibly. Some of you might see things. That's great. That's awesome. That's how he speaks to you. He speaks to me through conviction and just like, duh, moments. Okay, I've, we actually had somebody ask, Scott from Illinois, hope you're still listening. If you are, hi. Thank you for the question a couple weeks ago. He asked, you know, how did you, how do you consistently hear from the Spirit, essentially is what he was asking, you know? And this is what I told him. I was like, we get these things that we see either after the fact or during, and we get convictions. And this was a conviction. So I prayed. I prayed right then and there. I prayed. I prayed out loud. I talked to God. Now, if there was a bear or a mountain lion, they probably think I was crazy and I wasn't worth eating anyway because they kept hearing me talk to some invisible person, (laughs) right? They're probably like, what? What's all that noise? I did make noise a lot too because that's what you're supposed to do. If you're out in the woods, guys, you got to make noise, okay? Make noise so that animals are like, okay, I'm not going over there. Trust me, all right? Get a bear bell. You know, different things like that. No, but seriously, I was talking to God. Pray to God. Sing songs. I was singing songs of praise and worship on the way up. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm fearful right now, but you know what? I'm here to spend time with you, God, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to trust in you. And honestly, yes, if something still happens, something may still happen because he allows it, because he allowed me to go there. I used my free will to go all the way on that mountain by myself, and he might allow something to happen. But I do know that if it's in his will, he has dominion over all those animals, as do we. He gives us that dominion, that authority over these animals. But he has that animal. He knows where they are at any given time. And he could have pushed them away, moved them away. I don't know. But hey, I didn't get eaten. Here I am speaking to you a couple weeks later. Okay, here we are. So folks, trust in God. Just if you're fearful, if you're scared, if there are things that you're unsure of, if you're in a tight situation, in an awkward situation, you know, you can pray. You can pray and God is there with you all the time. Now, always seek the kingdom, always seek God's will, but just know that when you're in a situation, God has that empathy. God knows where you are. And God feels your pain. God feels your sorrow. And he weeps. And he wants to be there for you. No matter what. So here's your verse to meditate on. And I wanted to share this one because this verse is amazing to me. And I remember it every single time I'm worried or I'm fearful. And I know we often quote David's psalm of, although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear, which is another good one. That's Psalm 23, 4. And it reminds you to not be fearful. But I love this verse here in Isaiah, where this is a direct comment from God. Now we're going to read this and break this down. Here we go. If you have your Bibles and it's safe to read it, the verse I want you to meditate on here is Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah Chapter 41, verse 10. And it says this. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. 
I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I love God so much. He loves us so much. Let's break this down really quickly. Now, the book of Isaiah combines a current state of the area or nation or world and the future hope of of the coming Messiah or Emmanuel, which is Jesus. Now, the first 39 books tell the rebellious nature of Israel, then goes into prophecy of different regions and then lamentations of certain leaders and cities. Okay, so that's the first 39 books or so. In chapter 40, this hope and comfort. In 41, the Lord tells us that he will help those in Israel, which also translates to the nature of God's heart, which is loving, caring, protecting, and many other awesome adjectives that we describe how good he is, okay? Now, the first line says, Do not fear, I am with you, makes us know that he is with you. He is with us. He's not far away on a cloud, you know, shooting lightning bolts and stuff. No, he's with us. If you're lonely, you have a friend. The next portion is, Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Dismayed is discouraged. They're pretty much synonyms. Knowing that we all fall short of the glory of God and are in desperate need of a Savior, we should not be discouraged because he is our God. He's not like the other gods, like money and fame and possessions and people even. Those things forsake you and those things perish. God does not. He's not like the other gods. He's like, you don't have to be discouraged. I'm your God. So don't worry. Not that money. If you make money your God, then that's your God. And then you should worry. But because I'm your God, don't worry. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. The next line is, I will strengthen you and help you. He gives us strength when when in need, when we need it, because he gives us what we need, (laughs) if that makes sense. If we need strength in a situation, it's a need. So he will give it to us because he gives us what we need. He'll sanctify us and strengthen us in faith. And he will provide help, whether it's in community, by spirit, or Something else, anything else that's in any situation to help glorify him. I'm sitting here, honestly, glorifying him. I'm going to say that he got me through that. I did not have to be fearful. And I was not after that. I prayed to him and then I was like, hey, this is great. So I want to glorify him right now. And I want to say that he got me through that situation. Praise God. Now, the final part says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He upholds us because he loves us. And notice he says that righteous right hand piece there. Right hand. In the New Testament, God gives us Jesus. And Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. We are lifted up by what Jesus has done for all of us on the cross. Well, thank you folks once again. I really appreciate all of you. Seriously, I really do appreciate you. And if you can continue to pray for the Holy Spirit Soapbox, that'd be awesome. Please tell the world about Jesus Christ. Please spread Holy Spirit Soapbox to maybe a friend, a family member. doesn't matter if they're a Christian or not. All of these episodes are about God. To teach every single one of us and remind every single one of us about who God is. So if you can please just pass our name around, that'd be really awesome. Now I want to end with that one question I asked earlier. But I'm going to say it a little bit differently this time. The question for you today is, where do you put your faith when you are fearful? Where do you put your faith when you are fearful? And that's it. Meditate on the on the verses. Utilize Isaiah 41.10. I love that verse. It's a reminder. It's actually like my background on my on my phone because... It's something that I refer back to often because, hey, you know what? I get scared sometimes. I get scared sometimes. Everyday situations. Life brings some weird stuff. (laughs) I'm not going to lie to you. I bring some weird stuff, especially when I put myself in these situations like, you know, hiking by yourself at 7 a.m. Interesting. Weird. Okay, anyway. Thank you all for joining in. I want to pray over every single one of you. I pray for you always, but let's close ourselves out here in prayer. If you have a prayer posture that you like to take, we like to say prayer posture because some people like to pray looking up to God with their hands up high. Some people like to just 
relax and listen and talk to God. And, and some people like to bow down and worship God, whatever that looks like. Take that prayer posture if you can do so, if it's safe to do so, and let's talk to our Creator. Our Father who is in heaven, we have a friend in you, and we know that we have a Savior in you. We know that we have everything that we need in you. We know that we do not have to fear. You told the prophet Isaiah to tell the, tell the world that there is nothing that we should fear. Because you are our God. You are the holiest God. You have dominion over everything and everybody. We should never have to fear, no matter what situation we're in. And we pray that we can put our 150,000% faith into you and into what Jesus has done for us on the cross. We pray for your spirit to continue to guide us so that we're not making those selfish moves, those self-centered moves, those prideful moves, so that we can be led by you so that we can do your will. We want your will to be done. That's what we want. And we want to take part and participation in your will. So we pray that you can continue to orient us back to you whenever we orient away. And we pray that you can always lead us away from those horrible situations or situations that we might put ourselves in or that others might put us in. We pray that if we are ever in those situations, though, that you are there with us and you can comfort us and we can rely on you. We pray all this in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.